Hello, my loves. It's Danielle Mercurio, and let's have a conversation around manifestation. I want to focus less on how to manifest because if you're listening to this episode, you're probably good at manifesting or you've read a lot about manifesting or you're really into manifesting and you want to know all the tips on how to manifest, how to call in the thing you want, how to make your desires a reality. However, let's talk about the underbelly of manifestation. Let's talk about the things that might be getting in the way from the full actualization of what it is that you're looking to manifest in your life. Are you here for it? I'm here for it because I want you to manifest all the things. So let's just like freaking do it. All right, manifestation. It's a hot trend buzzword when it comes to the spiritual world, self-help world, and it's something that we're all capable of, whether we are woke or not, whether we've read the law of attraction or not. And essentially what manifestation is, it's the ability to conjure up something in your being and then allow that thing, that desire, that want, that dream, that goal, that wouldn't that be nice situation to then land into your life. And a lot of times it is viewed as like a quick fix or like a hit. And that's definitely something that I played with. I think I definitely was in the high and the addiction of the law of attraction when I first heard about it. It was like so magical and juicy. And I heard it uh, maybe a year or two out of my like addiction recovery. So, you know, coming out of recovery for addiction, and then you learn about this magical method that allows whatever you want to happen. And for me specifically, I really wanted fame and money and a booming business. And so I was really into the law of attraction. I was really into manifesting. I would write out, you know, I see myself waking up in the morning and looking out the window at a beautiful sunrise, going into my meditation and then coming out of it and making myself a cup of coffee and sitting with my to-do list for the day as I get ready for a full day of calls, courses that I'm leading and booking gigs for travel. I'm being paid well over six figures, and I love my life. I look beautiful. People adore me. Everything is wonderful. That is what I did every day, and that's beautiful, right? And I was able to attract aspects of it, of course, because when you are doing that, the hope is that you're also doing things to coincide, right? You are doing things to help grow said coaching practice. You are creating, you know, at that time I I had a blog, I had a YouTube channel, I was networking, I was telling people about it, right? So I was doing things that would make sense in alignment with manifesting this dream life that I envisioned for myself, you know, 11, 12 years ago. However, a lot of it didn't come to fruition at that time. And the reason why it didn't come to fruition wasn't so much that I didn't know how to ask, that I couldn't visualize it, that I didn't even believe that that was possible because I did. I knew I was, I knew I was capable as a coach. I knew I was capable as an entrepreneur. I knew that that lifestyle was perfect for me. It made sense. I excelled in my coaching certification. Whenever I would stand up in front of a room at Toastmasters or wherever it may be, it landed. I knew I had a gift when it came to leading meditations. So I had faith in my ability. Where the issue was, I had no idea that insights from my parents, society, my childhood, even my friends, my coworkers, because I was still working a full-time job, they were all getting in the way and sabotaging the process constantly. Because I 
wasn't able to look at my fears around what people would think or where I was still holding on to the opinions that other people had about what I wanted, it was constantly deflecting it. Okay. And so until I could sit with the areas of my life that were blocking me, that is when things started to open up. Once I started to not feel triggered by what my parents thought. Once I realized that I wasn't going to be activated when someone had questions about what I did and me get all like muckled up inside, be like, blah, blah, blah. once I realized that, you know, making a ton of money wasn't going to be the thing to validate me, my gifts and my worthiness were going to be. Once those things connected, that's when things were able to click and I was able to start to excel and grow and leave my corporate job and do this. So we're going to go deeper into how do you navigate this, right? Like how do you, and I want to share where we get blocked and manifesting in hopefully a unique way that hasn't been shared before, right? Like I think we all, maybe not all of us, but many of us realize like, okay, yeah, some of the things that hold us back from having what we want is because we were told growing up, you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not worthy enough. You're not smart enough. You're not, you know, athletic enough. You're not this enough, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so we can, we can understand that, but I want to kind of paint a picture to help you navigate a little bit deeper because the thing is, is some of this stuff is sticky. Okay. Some of the stuff that you experienced growing up, some of the opinions, some of the societal narratives, they stick to us as much as we can say, like, I don't buy into that. I don't believe that that doesn't run my life. Mm, it still could have gotten in there somehow. It could be sticking to a part of you that you don't realize. And so how do we get in there? How do we uncover that stuckness, right? Well, first we have to realize that once again, it goes back to this idea of yes, we are creators. Okay. We came here to create that simple. Okay. Our soul came here because it wanted to create. It wanted to explore. It wanted to do as much as it could, not in a manic way, not in a way that like would be unsustainable or like, you know, burn yourself out, but in a way that felt steady in a way that felt like an evolution in a way that felt like you were building something that you were growing something in this life. That's what our soul came here to do. And right off the bat, our society is like, Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't know if I want you exploring all the time. I don't know if I want you jumping from job to job. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to tell you if you jump from job to job, that's going to be bad for your resume. Oh, people won't like this. So you've got to stay in this job. Even though your soul's like, Hey, I realize and recognize that this job that I thought I wanted isn't for me. I've done my due diligence. I've sat with it, but it just, it's not right. So I have a choice. Do I want to listen to society that says, Ooh, it looks bad on your resume. If you walk away or am I listening to my soul that says, Hey, you tried this out. It's not landing. It's not what you need. Take what you learn from it and keep going. That becomes our decision right there. And that gives us more power in manifesting as well, because it's showing that you are going beyond what society is telling you, right? Society might say like, don't jump around too much, but your soul is like, no, we got this. Right. And again, it's because you're using your, your due diligence, right? There's a, there's still that notion of how can I be the, the thread of responsibility while also trusting that, you know, some things Society might not be on board with, parents might not be on board with, your partner might not be on board with, but like you are, and there's good reason that you are. And so can you trust that, right? Um, so it's, it's recognizing that your soul is expansive. Your soul is here to learn. Your soul is here to grow. And if your soul feels like you're in situations that aren't allowing for that, then not only are you going to start to feel stuck, you're going to start to feel restless. You're going to start to feel passive aggressive. You're going to be more locked into your ego. Okay. The ego starts to take over when we are in situations, circumstances, dynamics that are not healthy for the soul evolution. And so we have to recognize that and be like, Whoa, like my ego is so in this. Why? Likely because my soul feels stuck right now. And since my soul feels stuck, it doesn't have anything to do. It doesn't know what to do. It keeps kind of giving us that little nudge like, Hey, maybe you should leave this situation or like, Hey, maybe you should go back to school. And then the ego's like, no, like you can't go back to school and what accumulate more debt. 
right? Like, like, you know, so we have to recognize like what's really going on here. And so when we get into those moments where we realize that, you know, we've, we've trapped our soul, we have an opportunity to unwind that, right? And look at how did this happen? Where is this coming from? Whose voice is this really? What's the real fear here? And hey, maybe you'll find out like, you know what, I financially, I can't leave this job right now. But you know what, I'm going to create an exit strategy, or I'm going to find, you know, other ways to give my soul that growth that it's craving coinciding work while working this job. Right. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean that like anytime you're like, Oh, I don't like this. I'm going to jump. It may mean, okay, I know this isn't ideal. So while I figure an exit strategy, what else can I do that might light me up? Is there a recreational class that I can take? Is there a hobby that I can pick up? Is there a Bravo show that I need to binge on? Anything to give you a different perspective, a different way to uh, look at, at life, you know? Is there certain aspects of my lifestyle I can clean up? Like maybe you notice because this job isn't what you want, uh, you might notice that after work you were always reaching for that glass of wine. Maybe, you know, again, you can't leave that job just yet, but you can leave that glass of wine every night, right? You can leave behind that ritual of needing that drink to, you know, as a way to try to cleanse yourself from the day in a job that you're not in agreement with. Because if you do that, guess what? That's going to free up some space for you. And by freeing up some space for you, then you can start to rally and be on board with what could be next. Okay. So it's really like taking inventory of your current life and realizing that you're never stuck. And I know, you know, the ego wants to be defiant on that. And all, a lot of that defiance, again, comes from society, comes from our parents, comes from our teachers, comes from our friends, comes from our coworkers, comes from our Instagram. Okay, there's a lot of judgment being fed to us. And I want you to unwind that and really look at the situation and really ask yourself, how true is it really? How true is it for me really? Because guess what? I'm a creator. I came here to evolve. I came here to learn. I came here to grow. And if something is stunting that, if something is preventing that, if something is making me feel like I'm less of myself, then you better believe there's something better. And you better believe you're worthy enough to explore it. Okay? So you are the co-creator in this world. You came here as a, as a soul to create and your helper, so to speak, is the universe, right? It's like the universe is, I like to think of it this way. Like, let's say like you're in Hollywood and you're a director and you want to make a movie, right? And, and, and this movie is the movie of your life. Okay. So your soul came here as the director. It's going to make this great movie. And in this great movie, there's this whole beautiful journey of, of overcoming obstacles in your, in your childhood and, you know, discovering like your true craft and, and arts and what you're good at as a teenager and moving into adulthood and finding your way through dating and relationships and where you're going to live. Right. So you're ready. You know, this movie is prime. It's, it's, it's juicy. It's got a lot of great, uh, things going on, right? It's, it's a, it's a loaded script. There's tons of possibilities. There's so many different, uh, people you have in mind to play all these different characters in, in the movie that is your life, right? So you're the director, you're ready to, to showcase this movie. You're also the producer and the, and the screenwriter as well. Okay. So the universe is kind of like Warner brothers. Okay. Or like the big studio that's like, Hey, like we're going to give you the green light to do this. And we're going to give you, you know, this much money to do it. We're going to give you this much agency, so to speak. And that's kind of how the universe works with us. And the universe will work on it uh, with us based on how much we're willing to ask for and how much we believe in it. Okay. It goes hand in hand. Uh, so if we're like, okay, we're going to need, you know, $20 million to, to create this and you understand why, and you can showcase, you know, that $20 million, what it represents, how it's going to work, bada, bada, bada. The universe is like, great, let's do it. Here's your 20 mil. Go have fun. Make your movie. However, if you haven't done your due diligence, if you're not really sure why you need $20 million, if you don't really believe that it will be a hit, if you don't think it will land, if you don't think you're actually capable of directing a movie, if you think the script has flaws, guess what? The universe is going to be like, hey, we're doing budget cuts right now. We're not going to be able to produce this movie or we're not going to be able to fund this movie. And you're like, yeah, I had a feeling. I didn't think so. But really why the universe is saying this is because it, it knows deep down if it gave you that 20 million, it would be a waste. 
You'd be like, why are we going to give the, this, this person 20 million? Because they don't actually believe in executing it. They don't actually believe in what's possible in, in being the director, the producer, the screenwriter, in bringing in the best talent to represent all of these faucets of our life. And so when we look at it from that perspective, we can also start to see that once again, it's like, ooh, who or what made you think that it's not possible to create the movie of your life? That if you were to go to the universe and say, okay, I'm ready, let's do this. I, I just, you know, give me the, give, show me the money that would make you think the universe would say no. So often we're so afraid of the universe saying no, and we kind of become people pleasers to the universe when we're trying to manifest or ask for something that we uh, cut ourselves down, right? Or we're like, you know, if I could have this, that would be great. But like, if not, like this will do. It's like, no, like be super clear and super direct about what you want. And don't be afraid to ask for a little bit more. But again, we get nervous because we treat the universe like a parent, like a boss, or we're like, ooh, like, if it's okay, can I have $20 to go to the movies? Or like, you know, would it be all right if I take Friday off? And we're kind of like tiptoeing around it. The universe doesn't care about any of that. The universe is not like judging you. And it doesn't care. It's here to give you whatever you want. But like, you need to be clear about what you want. So when you're tiptoeing around it and you're kind of like, ooh, I hope I didn't ask for too much. Let me, let me downsize my request. Well, then... You just did yourself a disservice because the universe doesn't care. That's why when you look at certain people in the world, you're like, how come they have more than me? They just asked for more. That's all. That's literally the only difference. They just asked for more and they believed that they could have it. And so what do you need to do to not only be able to ask for more or just ask for enough and be able to believe it? You will never ask for too much because you are the one in charge and you are the one creating this movie. And if you're the one creating this movie, you have an unlimited budget. Let's say you're like, oh shit, 20 million wasn't enough universe. We're going to need more because we got to get Scarlett Johansson and that's going to be another five mil to play my sister. Okay, cool. Here you go. Let's get Scarlett Johansson on board. And it's like literally that quick, that easy. What if your life was set up that way? What if your life was set up that literally it was just like going to the universe, going to this like big, you know, uh, screening company or this big, you know, Warner Brothers, if you will, whatever you want to call it, and being like, hey, this is what I would like to make happen. I'm, I'm going to be the director, the screenwriter, the producer, and this is what I need. Okay, done. Boom. Confidence. Okay, it takes confidence to manifest. Weakness shows that you don't actually think you're worthy. Or what will happen, and I see this happen a lot, is we get the thing that we want, we're able to ask for it, we get super excited, you know, you might be one of those people that gets really high on manifesting, right? Like you're like so into that and you put all your energy into making that request and asking for it, and visualizing it and believing it and then it happens. And then the next thing you know, it feels like it's just like fades away or just dissolves or just completely empties out of your life. It's because you put so much emphasis on the ask that you didn't actually think about the stability around it. You didn't actually think about what would it be like to keep it. You didn't actually think about what would it be like to hold it. And you didn't think about, you know, what courage that might take to hold it once you have it. Because oftentimes once we get the thing we want to manifest, some of the judgments that we're afraid of ramp up. All of a sudden, we start to worry that what people will think if you all of a sudden get a bigger house or if you do leave that job and go somewhere else, if you decide to be nomadic and you have an opportunity to do it. If we start to become weakened by our wounds, by the opinions of others, by things that triggered us growing up, then we're going to lose it. You know, it's going to be really hard to hold on to something because now all of a sudden, we don't believe it anymore and we're giving our power away. We're not believing that we're here to evolve. We're not here, you know, to, to grow. We're not here to be taken care of. We're not here to be supported. So if that's the case, of course, it's going to run away. And so many people get into a cycle where they're able to manifest and then it falls away and they manifest and then it falls away. They're able to get the money and then the money's gone. They're able to get the person and then they leave them. And then they're just manifesting that over and over again. So the next time we manifest, we want to add in a caveat. Okay, we want to add in, this is what I am asking for. And I'm asking for the strength, the awareness, and the courage 
to maintain it. Okay, we have to put that into the plan. We have to put that into the framework, what the maintenance of this looks like. What does this look like from a sustainable perspective? How can we get into a state of flow of showing up for it every day? With the understanding that, yeah, it might feel a little awkward at first. Yeah, there might be some questions that get thrown your way that make you uncomfortable. But once you get through that initial phase and start to get into a groove, it just becomes your natural reality because it's what you're meant to have and it's how you're meant to exist. And the more that you can acknowledge that and accept it, the more not only do you have that, the more you can grow from there. Right? It's why many people, when we look back on their stories, it's not like they went from saying, I'm going to be an actor to winning an Oscar that year. That could happen for sure. But for a lot of people, it's I'm going to be an actor and I got to find an agent and I've got to get photos and I've got to go on auditions. And once I get that part, I'm going to believe that there's another part for me. And once I book that commercial, I'm going to book a gig on a TV show. Right. And so on and so forth before all of a sudden that person looks back and it's like, whoa, look at how much I accomplished. And now I'm getting that Oscar. And I'm getting that Oscar because it was a growth, right? And every time that, you know, you, you heard a yes, it strengthened you into moving into the next yes and the next yes. And then we expand upon that, right? Another thing is, is let's say you keep asking for the same thing and it doesn't work out. Maybe it means you need to ask for something different, right? Change it up a little bit. If you notice that like you're really looking for a partner, right? That's a big one. I want to manifest my partner. I want to manifest the person I'm going to marry. I want to manifest true love. And you do. You keep kind of bringing in someone new, bringing in someone new, bringing in someone new. And they're, they're always at first exactly what you want. You're like, oh, my gosh, this is it. This is finally happening. And then before you know it, all of a sudden they become avoidant or it turns out they have like a lot of baggage or they haven't shown up and done the work, right? And and then, you know, the whole thing just kind of falls apart. Well, maybe we don't want to manifest a person like that anymore. And maybe we need to be a little bit more focused on their emotional stability. You know, what they have to offer from the space of being available from the long term. And sometimes we don't, we think that's the, we're like, we think that's a given. We're like, oh yeah, well, of course the universe knows that I want someone for the long haul. If I'm saying I want true love. But a lot of times we're just so focused on like how it's going to feel in the initial stages that we don't actually focus on the longevity. We don't focus on the long term. You know, today I was thinking about, you know, partnership for me and I do want long term partnership. And that's something that's been a little bit delayed in my life, partly because it wasn't really a priority for me, but now it is. And so as I lean into that being more of a priority, of course, it's going to bring up certain triggers for me and certain things that uh, are blocking me manifesting it, right? And so I've been navigating through that. I'm going to give you a strategy in a little bit too that's been mwah for me. But today I was thinking I was, my dog was in, uh, I took her to daycare. And usually when I take her to daycare, I take her once a week because it's good for her to be with other dogs and uh, it's good for her to also have other humans looking out for her, right? And I always use it as an opportunity to just like clean when she goes. It's like my day to clean, just not that she's actually really great when I clean, but I just, you know, it's a lot easier without her hair. So anyway, I was cleaning and I was just thinking about like the type of person I want to be with. And I was thinking, I was like, you know, how the, how would this set up into my life with somebody? I'm like, I could totally see us still having this routine where I take Zara to daycare and I come home and clean. And, you know, I think about the ways that my partnership, my partner is supporting me and maybe they're at work or maybe they're traveling or, you know, they're doing something, but it's like, they're showing up in one way while I'm able to show up in another and it's supporting our life together. And I never really clicked it like that before. Like, I think I've just looked at my life of like, this is what you do as single Danielle. And now I'm starting to think about like, how does the world work as non-single Danielle, as relationship Danielle, as living with someone Danielle. And some things in my life would change, but really they would be shifting and integrating with that other person. And likely given the role that I have as as someone that is self-employed, works from home, I am more than happy to take on some of the responsibilities of the household as I would when I was single for the sake of our partnership, for the sake of our dynamic, for the sake of what they're bringing to the table. And I just, I never really acknowledged it that way. I never really looked at 
the domestic piece and our household and being a unit and what that feels like. And something clicked for me, right? Clicked for me to have that dynamic, to be available for uh, domestic household partnership, if you will, right? As opposed to continuously recreating the single Danielle storyline constantly. In the single Danielle storyline, Danielle lives alone with her dog. Danielle has all the responsibilities. Danielle does all the chores. Danielle cleans, cooks, whatever. But it's like, what would that look like a mesh with someone else that I feel makes a lot of sense for me? And, and partly why I say that too. I mean, the guy could work from home too, but I, I tend to be more drawn to someone that is in a more traditional role. I, uh, I find that that actually brings me a lot of peace as someone that's self-employed. I like that dynamic. I like that duality. And so leaning into them in the traditional, maybe corporate role and what my role would be, you know, being at home, it, it gives me perspective, right? And it gives the opportunity for the universe to be creative. Okay. A lot of times we get boxed in, into what we think we know, as opposed to letting the universe be creative with our requests. And that's why I want you to be open to calling in something a little bit different or be open to just really claiming what you're looking for from a long-term perspective or from a growth perspective or from a abundance perspective. And then let the universe start to, to, again, like get creative with it, show you what's possible. I recently uh, went on a couple dates with someone where even though it turned out we weren't the best match for each other, it was an opportunity for me. One moment. Excuse me. I'm talking very fast and I was clean today, so the dust is everywhere, you know? But anyway, what I loved about this person that matched with, it was an opportunity for the universe to show me what is possible <clears throat> in ways that I would not have expected. So, okay, match with the guy, cute, whatever. Um, we matched and I think we like went back and forth talking. He has a son and um, his son lives in another state. So he goes back and forth a lot and we wound up not meeting up for a few months. And so I just kind of forgot about it, to be honest. And then he sent me a text the other month. I was like, Hey, like, I'm, I'm back. Like, sorry, you know, uh, would you still be interested in, in, in meeting up? And I'll say, of course. So anyway, we get to talking more, we meet up, whatnot, come to find out that this person born and raised in Greenville, where I currently live on my Venus line and the situation, the dynamic with, uh, his son is that his, uh, son's mother actually wound up Uh, being from Philadelphia, and when they separated, went back up to Philly. Philly is where I'm from. My family lives an hour and a half from there. And so I thought that was really interesting, right? Okay, I'm meeting someone that literally has to fly frequently to the place I used to live before I lived here. Further, he was sharing, like, you know, he's likely going to have to buy a place outside of Philly just to make things easier for him and the dynamic with his son. I'm like, okay, Danielle, you're literally talking to someone right now that, you know, is, is single, lives in your area, you know, has good values, is a great dad, has a, uh, does well financially. That's never, I, I, I tend to only date individuals that do well financially. That's like something that's built in, right? For me, it's the longevity piece, right? Uh, so, you know, a lot of things were kind of flowing, but again, where I, I was so fascinated by this setup was when he shared about the Philly connection. And then he might have a second home outside of like what I consider my home outside of my current home. And I just thought that was the greatest thing ever. And again, even though there were some things that made it clear we weren't a good match for each other, it opened me up and was so refreshing to be like, don't get boxed into what you think you need or who you think you need or clinging to that other person that it didn't work out with. Because guess what? If you open yourself up, you're going to see there's a lot of really cool possibilities out there. And the universe is just constantly recalibrating things and being like, how do you like this dynamic? How do you like this scenario, right? How do you like this algorithm? And I was like, I really liked that algorithm. It was cool, right? 
And uh, it was it was a, an opportunity for me to grow from the space of what was possible. And if anything, that that dynamic and the few dates that I went on with this person showed me that. And I, I thought that was just so brilliant, right? And that's why it's important that we look at things differently. We go outside our comfort zone or out of the box a little bit when it comes to what we're looking to manifest. Because if we get too clingy or tight around what we want, a lot of times that's ego. Because the ego, what? Wants what's known. The soul is super comfortable with the unknown. The soul is so comfortable with the unknown. The soul is so down with mystery. So we know when we're getting super uh, clingy or hyper-focused, we're like begging the universe, like, bring me back my ex. He's the only one. Or, you know, I have to have this many followers on Instagram. Or, you know, I need to be famous. Or, you know, whatever it is, like we're clinging. You know, I ha- you, know you went on an interview for a job. I have to have this job. This job is perfect for me. That might be ego right? That might be ego trying to claim something known, trying to perfect the process as opposed to, let's say you go on that interview and you're like, wow, this job is amazing. It'd be so perfect for me. Or you go on a date and you're like, wow, like this person's awesome. I'd love to see where it goes. Uh, you know, my ex, yeah, it didn't work out, but like if he were to come back to the picture, I'd be open to it. You want to bring in a little bit of lightness, a little bit of flexibility to the request. And there's always that saying of like, if not something, if not this, something better. Because isn't that what we want? Okay, like, let's say you found, let's say you were like holding on to your ex. I want my ex, I want my ex, I want my ex, right? And you're like, just bring them back to me. And, and then, you know, you get your ex back and it's kind of like, okay, you got him back. You got the high of it, but like some of the same problems are coming up and all these different things. And then, you know, out of the blue, you meet someone else. And this other person that you meet is far better than your ex surpasses all these things. Are you going to say, Oh, you know, I'd love to be with you a new person, but like I told the universe, I really wanted my ex. So I'm just going to stick with that. No, you would go with the new person because you, you know that if there's something better available, we do want that deep down because that's our soul talking, right? Our soul is like, there is something better. And we want to believe that the ego is there is nothing better. Hold on to what you have or try to get back what you had. That's backwards. That's loony. That's bananas. That's not where you want to be headed. Ego only wants that because it's known. Soul wants mystery. Soul wants what's better. Soul wants growth. Soul wants deeper alignment. Soul wants enrichment. Soul wants love. Soul wants experience. Okay? You're not going to get experience by continuously going back to your ex that you fight with all the time. You're not going to get experience by being so afraid to leave your job because you're worried about what people will think. The only experience you're going to get is trauma, is uh, depression, is anxiety, Okay, is, is needing to constantly talk about this with your therapist over and over and over again. Don't you want some new material for your therapist? Get, then get out of your comfort zone. And that's going to help with that, okay? So... Be open to calling in something better and be open to switching it up a little bit. Be open to getting a little deeper into the flavor of, of what you want, right? And let's let's get rid of the, the people pleaser dynamic with the universe, okay? Let's stop being like, if that's okay with you, universe, you're just like, anything's okay with me. You just got to be down with it. If you're down with it, I deliver. If you're not down with it, I don't. It's that simple. So how do we get down with it, right? How do we recognize I am a co-creator. I am the director of this movie, okay? You know, Dolores Cannon said, we came here to learn how to manipulate energy. And as soon as I say that, the ego's like, manipulate energy, you say? How do I do that? But really, it's, it's not about that, right? It's manipulate energy from the space of understanding that there are frequencies, that there are dynamics that there are energetic portals that we can step into by the power of our belief by the power of what's possible by the power of what our soul is driving us towards that's how we start to manipulate energy we start to you know utilize energy in a way where we're able to allow what it is that we want to come in okay so let's visualize this i want you to imagine you in just like the center here okay like it me Okay. You can even get a piece of paper and just write in the middle of the paper, it me. Okay. And then put a little circle around it. Okay. Are you doing it? I'm going to do it with you. Okay. Um, let me get a new piece of paper. Okay. So we're going to have our paper, it me. Okay. Then we're going to put another ring around it. And then we're going to put another ring around it. 
then we're going to put another ring around it, okay? We're going to get back to these rings. Outside of these rings, I want you to write a few things that you're really jonesing for in your life. Could be partnership, okay? Could be dream job, could be expanding your family, it could be moving, right? What are some things that you're just like, oh my gosh, I'm so ready for this. Or like every new moon, this seems to be like what you're asking, right? So write them all out and write them all outside the rings, okay? Now, we see all these like beautiful dreams and desires and things that you want outside of the rings. So we see it, me, here in the little circle with the other circles around it. And then we see everything you want around this. Now the rings, what they represent are ego, Another ring might represent parents. Another ring might represent society. Another part of the ring might represent your inner child or teen. Another ring might represent friends, coworkers. Right? When you think about what it is in your life that's blocking these things from getting to it me, why aren't these things getting in? Because guess what? All these things have to go through the layers of notions and opinions and buildup and stickiness from your ego, from your parents, from your society, from your coworkers, from your inner teen, from your friends. And so we aren't able, you know, you could say like, I want all of this, but it's not able to get in because you're not doing the work. So when we talk about shadow work, when we talk about, you know, getting support, when we talk about healing your wounds, what we're saying is, is look at these rings. And when you look at these rings, you have to un, un, uh, unravel and look at the real possibility that, that these are things that are holding you back. That as much as you want to get that dream job, your dad's wish was for you to be a lawyer. And so you continue to stay a lawyer. We have to unpack that, right? Because as soon as you release that limiting belief of I have to be a lawyer, guess what? That ring opens up. It evaporates. And guess what? That dream job that you you want starts to be able to come in and it starts to be able to make its way towards me. See what I'm saying here? Okay. Let's say um, you really, really, really want uh, to, let's say you're an entrepreneur and you'd like to make another 50K this year. Uh, but you're not able to. It seems like, you know, you only get so far and then all of a sudden, like, you just hit this plateau and you're not able to make, you know, that extra 50K, that extra, you know, 5K a month, whatever it is that you're looking to do. All right, well, then let's take a look at society. Society that frowns upon being an entrepreneur that says how hard it is, how difficult it is, you know, how much, how, how uh, you have to do it all on your own. And, you know, how are you getting by? What are you doing for insurance? And people take you seriously. You can actually make money doing that. You have to unpack all of that because there's beliefs that you're still carrying around why this job isn't sufficient. And so once you unpack that and acknowledge that and release it and work through it, guess what? That ring dissolves. And guess what? That extra 5k a month, boop, boop, it makes its way towards you because it has a pathway. A lot of times our pathway isn't clear because it is scattered with obstacles. It is cluttered with hurdles. And those hurdles are things that we built up over the years because of our environment, because of things we were influenced by. And so we have to literally go in and remove those hurdles, release those obstacles to then make way and make it so much easier for what we want. Because if we're able to clear the path, it's a lot easier to not only manifest it, but to keep it. Okay. So if you want sustainable manifestation in your life, you've got to be radically honest about why those things aren't getting in, or if they do get in, why you're not able to hold them. Okay. Um, so that's, those are, so those are some of the things that, that I think block us from manifesting. And so the more that we're able to ask directly for what we want, really look at our life like a movie that we are just constantly creating, recognizing that we came here to evolve, not being afraid to call in something a little different, change it up a little bit. Okay, like make a new vision board, uh, buy a fresh journal, 
write out some new things, like do like what I did, like having more awareness of what it would actually be like living with someone, right? Cohabitating, which I never really gave it much thought other than like, we'll live together. It's like, no, no, no. Get into the vibration of living together outside of what you know, what living means. Because for me, living means living by myself because I haven't had a roommate since I was 26 years old and I've lived a lot of places. I've been nomadic twice. Okay. I just got a dog like a year and a half ago. Like, cohabitating is kind of a new concept to me. And so this idea of wanting to call someone in to be my long-term partner, it's like, well, you know, maybe you should think about what it would be like to live with them. Right. And, and I don't say this to like, also like obsess and be like, I have to get it just right for it to happen. But it, it, what it does is it just, it allows some creative ideas, some, some juices to kind of start flowing, to give you a different perspective into what you're looking for, especially if you're just feeling stuck in your manifestations, right? So that's that's kind of a way to look at it. And just, you know, play with your power and do it simply. Like, let's say, yeah, you're looking to call in a new client. Maybe that's been difficult. You haven't been able to call in that new client. Call in something random. Like, let's say you haven't seen your neighbor in a while. You're like, you know, and it's not anyone that like would be your client. Maybe you don't even know this neighbor's name. You just see them walking their dog from time to time. You're like, you know what? I haven't noticed the neighbor walk their dog in a while. I'd love to see him. And then just let it go because you're not going to be obsessed with seeing the neighbor because they're not really, not to be rude, but like they're not that important to you. Especially if it's a neighbor, you literally don't know their name. You've never talked to them before. You just happen to notice when you drink coffee, they walk by. Put that out there. And then likely you're going to forget about it because it's really not that important at the end of the day. I guarantee what's going to happen when you least expect it. Oh, there goes neighbor with the dog. And that just gets you warmed back up again, right? That just gets you prime and ready to go, right? Like same thing, like I'm going to, you know, I, I would love to get a parking, you know, spot downtown on a, on a Friday night right near the restaurant and not pay for parking, you know? It's like things that, that you can just be chill about and like don't hyper obsess. Like I got to find that parking spot. It's like, hey, like I know if I really had to park in a parking garage, I could, but I really don't want to. It would be much more fun and much more satisfying and so much easier to just get a spot near the restaurant and leave it at that and let yourself get that spot at the restaurant. Okay, so like finding little things like that uh, are, are also helpful ways. Um, be mindful, too, of who you're spending time around. If you notice that you're talking to people that are always negative, always have something to say about someone else, like don't involve yourself in those conversations because those are going to activate a lot of your old triggers right? About why you can't do something. Uh, don't engage in those, those conversations or change the subject if you need to. Uh, that's not bypassing. I mean, look, if it's someone that is your partner or a sibling or someone, you know, you talk to on a regular basis, maybe you say something like, Hey, I notice when we get together, we seem to always want to gossip about people. I'd love to talk about something else, or I'd love to, uh, make our conversations more about boom this, pick something else or pick a different activity. You know, if you notice that you're always gossiping over drinks, maybe you need to change it up and like go for a hike in nature where you're commenting on nature <laughs> and, and, and in that, you know, uh, and you're talking about things you're grateful for. I don't know. You know, I mean, you know, the person might think you got a little kumbaya on them, but like change it up. Okay. If you want something new in your life. You've got to do some things that are kind of new, right? If you want things to expand, you've got to expand the possibilities because again, we're co-creators over here. And, uh, the more that you rally with that, the more you get on board with that, the more magic can happen, the more fun can happen, the more ease, and the more that you're in your soul's capability and the more that your soul is leading the way, unless you're going to feel stuck or trapped in that ego perspective. So give it a whirl. Play with the diagram that I shared with you a little bit. I'm going to do a reel on it as well to give you a visual. And let me know how it works for you. Let me know if, you know, by changing up your energy, you're able to manifest not only more easily, but more clearly, and also with the intention of doing it from the space of sustainability and longevity. You, my love, are the creator. You are the director, the screenwriter, the producer. You are more than capable of allowing and making and leaning into the life that you want. Okay. Okay. I love you. Good luck. Not that you need it, but like you got this.